I was when I was a, a teenager about to go to university, I thought that doing business and doing good were two separate avenues and paths in life. And I'd say that in 2012, a lot changed in my life. I was a young entrepreneur. I had co-founded quite a few businesses. And I honestly just wanted to make a billion dollars. That was really my motivation, to be honest. I wanted a boat, I wanted a plane, I wanted all the toys. And I had a wake-up call um, in November 2013 when our mother passed away in a sudden accident. And my younger brother and I, he had just entered Princeton University, we looked at each other and we said, would it be possible to make a lot of money, do a lot of good, and have a lot of fun doing so. And if we could find the right harmony between those three things, then that would be a life worth living. So, you know, we went on to this journey to try to discover a new way of doing business and also a new way of doing philanthropy, where we don't have to make a lot of money on one side and then give a lot of money, but it could be embedded into everything we do. And that's when we launched our organization, TO.org and it's been an incredible journey since then and i can say with certainty that we've managed to do all three things and um, it has been the most amazing experience spending time with innovators with activists with artists with people that dedicate their life to finding solutions to the world's most pressing issues so we support them we support them with energy with time with passion with capital and with our creativity and those resources brought together can really accelerate some of the world's most vital ventures and um, I think that it is embedded in what we do today I think it must be embedded in everything we do today there shouldn't be a trade-off between doing good and doing well When I, when I dove into this new world in 2013, I really didn't know where to start. So I went to conferences, um, I signed up to communities, um, I learned. I was a humble servant and I spent a lot of time observing and watching what was going on in this world and building relationships with individuals that could teach me something about the art of activism and the art of you know doing good. And you know, I don't want everyone to have to go through the same journey um, because it's time consuming and you know I needed to travel a lot and I think that today seven years later eight years later um, it's much easier we've seen with the rise of Greta we've seen with you know the rise of just good business in general it has become now a little bit easier to find avenues to dive into this um, one of the things that I'm really proud of um, is that we launched a campaign called the Together Band, uh, which was uh, basically an attempt to make the global, uh, the global goals, uh, the SDGs, famous. Amina Mohammed um, from the UN had asked us five years ago if we could try to find a way of getting the goals out there into popular culture. And fashion um, and design is often one of the best ways um, to infiltrate popular culture with good messaging. So we designed a band in the 17 colors of the SDGs made out of ocean plastic and this metal is humanium. This is a decommissioned AK-47 taken out of child, ch children's hands in El Salvador. So from a product perspective it was quite innovative and then we basically brought together 800 ambassadors from Naomi Campbell, Lewis Hamilton, um, David Beckham and many others to really push, um, push the bands out and the messaging around the bands and the funds that were uh, raised from the sales of the bands would go into programs that were fighting for uh, their respective goals and this was a way for us to start a conversation right I have an eight-year-old daughter she wears a band and when her friends ask her, what is this? She says, oh, I support zero poverty or I support life on land. And it's a conversation starter. So I think that really one of the easiest ways to get into this is to start asking questions at a dinner table, um, you know, in between classes or even with your teachers. 
and embed these, you know, this curiosity um, everywhere you go. And you'll be surprised with some of the remarkable answers that you'll find. So what a lot of people don't realize is that we vote with our forks and we vote with our wallet. So where we choose and we vote with our viewership. Um, and that's already, I'd say, the first step of activism is choosing. I will not engage with um, uh, food that I don't know the provenance of. Um, I will not buy clothes where um, you know, the supply chains are not transparent and where I don't actually know where the materials are coming from. And so that's something that we can do right away because we have purchasing power and brands adapt to demand. And so what I've seen be very effective is in a restaurant asking, is this grass fed beef? And if it's not grass fed beef, then say no. And after a while, the, the waiters are going to go back to the owner of the restaurant and say, look, we're not selling any beef anymore because people are asking for it to come from, you know, um, uh, from pastures. Um, or you know, going to choosing the stores that you want to shop in. Yeah, so that's really the first thing that we can do, and we can do that right now. We can also start by following people that are interesting on social media and engaging with them and helping them get their messages out. The greatest thing today is we're all our own media platforms. And so resharing positive content and um, allowing those that don't have necessarily the voice or the platform to do so, um, and accelerating them is, is already a lot, right? And that's, um, that's something that we can do right away. And if we wanna go a little bit further, I'd say that as you start going into university and choosing you know, your path, um, we can embed activism in any job career, in any sector. And I think that just having that in the back of your mind while you study and while you engage with your professors is something that will definitely allow you once you do enter the job market or into you know the adult world, uh, as they say, you will be you know ready with a toolkit of you know how you want to use your fork, your wallet, and your voice to influence change. I'll tell you something, it's, it's about the science of flow. And when we get into flow, which is our optimal uh, state of mind that allows us to perform without second guessing ourselves, to perform at the ultimate level, that often comes from putting yourself out there in uncomfortable zones, whether that's extreme sports or even getting into flow while going off on a musical solo, if you're a musician. When we get there, our five neurochemicals, they're secreting at very high levels and it allows us to really feel at the best possible state. And so for my case, as an extreme skier, um, I'd say that it has really allowed me to be a better entrepreneur, a better father, and a better husband, and a general, generally overall better human being because I understand how far I can push the limits while still being comfortable and confident in doing so. <laughs> That's a very, very powerful question. And no one's actually ever asked me that. I'd say a, a, a relatively generic answer as a father is I'm very proud of my four children. Um, you know, they're very connected with nature. They're very connected with, um, you know, other human beings and are extremely compassionate. So I'm obviously very proud of that. But from a, from a more, um, I'd say material or manifested um, perspective, what I'm very proud of is having built an incredible partnership with my brother. And, you know, I think that we can't do things alone, right? If we, if we want to go fast, we go alone. And if we want to go far, we go together. And so having built this strong relationship with my partner and brother, that has allowed us to also bring a lot of other people along on the journey. And so seeing these shifts over the last eight years 
of many people who thought we were crazy at the beginning to do what we do and are today part of our tribe is for me the greatest sign of um, accomplishment because without the masses we'll never be able to solve our problems. Should we talk? Should we become voices? No. Even when we do something, should we should we show off with this? Because I truly think we should. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. do you think? Well, so that's you know in our in our culture in in, in the Jewish religion, um, we're not allowed to speak about the good that we do, because it is um, it is said that the more we boast about our goodness, um, the more evil eye that we can attract, and we also boost our ego in the making which is never good. However, I think times have changed and I think that um, showing others uh, what we do and inviting them to do their own or to join us is the only way that we will scale solutions. We have to talk about it. We have to scream about it, always in a humble way, but in a way that allows people to see that doing good is cool. <laughs> doing good can be sexy, right? And we need that to happen because if not, it's just not fun. And when something's not fun, then we don't do it with passion. We do it out of purpose and maybe sometimes out of a mercenary mindset. But I think today we need to enjoy what we do. That was Naxon Mimran. People follow him on Instagram, uh, lately on Twitter and on Facebook yeah. and on to.org. Yeah. A lot of things to learn and to admire and to feel like what the heck is this guy looking like this is doing in this serious world. Thank you, Naxon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Such a pleasure. Mm -hmm.